Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Well, hello, Cheers. Mr. Blue Man. Are you talking to me? Are you okay? We're already having a good time, Rachel. Well, for reference, if you're listening on podcast. Oh, sorry. Our drink is very blue. The drink the is, a, it's electric blue. What would you call that? Turquoise? I'm going electric blue. Yeah, it's very blue. It's it looks like though. blue Powerade, like growing up, you know? Yes, it does. That's right. That's right. We're well, a Powerade family, not Gatorade. We'll get into that in a little bit, but this is a podcast where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about, everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today, we are talking about the things people do that scream, I'm, I'm bad, bad with, with money. money. <laughs> you guys really have been practicing cat and guard. <laughs> we didn't practice that at all. That one was time, the first time. One take wonder is first what that's try. called. So good. Is what that's so called. what does that mean, Rachel? Uh, that means that, well, there are people that are just terrible with money and they admit it and like there's some things that you can be bad at money but like people say that it's okay and we'll get into those of like we're going to debunk some of that but then there's just some flat out things people do that you're thinking no i think majority of people in america would look at that and say common sense would say that is wrong so uh, we're going to dive into some of those scenarios but that's right while we do that george uh, what are we sipping on we are sipping on a beverage that is called neptune's gardens I, I don't know why there's so many plurals in this drink, but mixologist <laughs> Michael assured me that there are multiple <laughs> plurals, uh, and it's very bright, very fun. We're going to give you a rating and reveal the cost per glass at the end of the episode, along with the recipe in the show notes and description. So stay tuned to the end if you want that. I'm actually very interested of what's in it, so I'm, I will be staying you, you'll be stay excited. Stay tuned till the end. Well, you have to be here. You can't leave. I can't, so I will be here. You are the show. And Without I'm, you... And there this is, is no just show. my first cocktail. I've taken two sips, so and she's this already is about to. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen? Well, we spent a lot of time on Reddit for this episode. Surprise, and by surprise! We, not me. The writers. I don't go on Reddit it's because too dark it makes for me so. I didn't know people actually like go on it. Yeah, and apparently they do, and that's like where all the hate is. So I stay away. Well, some people just call it honesty, Rachel. They're realists. Oh, is that what it is? No, they're just they're sad. They there's a lot sad. of just sad, angry people on Reddit, but there's also some humor and there's a yeah. lot of honesty. And so we decided to make a list of our favorites because everyone loves a list. But before we do that, can we just preface this whole episode and just talk about the fact that some of these may come across as like we're trying to judge people. We're just relaying the information and uh-huh. trying to have some teaching to help you avoid some of it. But when we say some of these, it's going to I don't want to sound like we're punching down. You know, we're not here to judge people. We just want to help them make better money decisions. And we hope that none of you people listening do some of these things that scream, I'm bad with money. And if you do, it's okay. There's still time to change and grow. That's right. Is that, can I just say that? I think that's fair. Yes, we're not here to make fun of. But I will say some of these, you're like, oh, no, I think. It's okay if you feel a little called out. I think eight and a half out of 10 people would, (laughs) nine people, nine out of 10 people would say. Eight and a half. That's why I said a half can't technically be a person, I guess, in my stats. Would probably say like, yeah, it's probably not the smartest thing ever. So if you so, feel called out, if you feel like we're reading your mail, that's good sometimes to have a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. All right. Uh, check should I spirit. jump into the first one here, George? Yeah, we got 15 things. Let's rifle through them. Uh, not accepting a raise because they don't want to rise to a higher tax bracket. Oh. So that's something that screams I'm bad with money because they're like, no, I can't make more because I don't want to go in the next tax bracket. That's right. Yeah. This one, uh, this is a gear grinder for me, Rachel. Because we don't teach taxes in high school. Can we just say yes. there's a lack of financial literacy? That is fair. And we have a high school curriculum that actually does teach you how taxes work, which is in 48% of schools now. But the thinking behind this is flawed because tax brackets don't work like that. You don't – if you make a dollar more than the 15% bracket, you don't right. automatically jump to all of your income is taxed at 20% now. No. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. But if you do take a raise – that does jump you tax bracket wise. You owe a little more in taxes. Yes, you would, but it would still be offset by what you're going to make. Yes. So. So if it's like fifteen percent up to fifty thousand, and you make fifty one thousand, well, the next tax bracket isn't actually tax based on fifty one thousand. It's just the extra thousand. Yeah. That you're paying that extra taxes there. on. So. so. I want to make that very clear. That's a good one, though. That is a good one. Okay, what's next? When you ask them how much they have to spend, and they take a glance at their phone and reply with their current bank balance. Hoi. Oh, gosh. I feel like they're going to make that one into a meme. Just me going, hoi. Oh, man. Uh, so this can is, I, can what's I tell the you heart this? behind this? 
Yeah, yeah, we don't want to spend everything that we have, right? So, so you get twelve hundred bucks. Like, sweet, I got twelve hundred bucks to spend. I can just spend what I want. I can spend. What I want. Can I tell you, uh, Winston? I traveled this past week to New York City. You we did. did a trip for two days, and um, we had a lot of expenses this month, and we had planned on it, right? So, like, we were we were planning on it. But I will be honest, George, it was one of the first times that I looked at our checking account and I thought... Got a little spooked? Yeah, a little bit. And I was like, oh, man, like, we really have to, like, watch this. So I've learned, even as a spender, when I feel, I'm like, I feel that now. So there's hope to people out there where you think, oh, no, maybe I am one of these people. I just look at my bank account and just say I can spend whatever I want. No big deal. But when you start living and you're in a world and in a discipline and in a habit... You know that you have a certain amount in your check. You know you're what you know you're yeah. doing the things that we teach, which is how we both live, and it starts to kind of get smaller and smaller and smaller. You will feel this <gasps> panic. Not oh, let's just go spend it all Yay. and everything's going to be There's okay. There's still money left over. And I saying, didn't overdraft. That's this right. Month. And I'm saying that as a spender. So all that to say, the, as you put this into habit, your emotions even may change. So yeah. It's possible. Well, I like to, to have person. a buffer in the checking account. I do too. So that's a yes, good like you don't want to ride that thing to zero. No, no. You want to have, you know, when you're maybe in your you're first starting your financial journey, it might be a few hundred bucks. 200, yep. 300, 400, 500 bucks. As you get further in the baby steps, I think it's wise to have a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. Yeah. Set that floor for whatever gives you some security. Yes. It doesn't need to be twenty thousand dollars sitting in your checking account. Right, right. But you know, if you can get to the point where you have next month's bills and expenses sitting in checking, that's a good feeling. Yes, absolutely. Love it. Okay, next. They not only applied for a puppy loan, yes, a loan to purchase a puppy, but they got denied. Ouch. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't the forever home for that pup. Wow. The pup said, no, thank the you. The financial God spoke that destiny into existence. This is existence. a new trend, is people taking on debt to get dogs. Can I tell you why? Because the dog world is God just expensive. like the American culture, that our expectations have risen and risen and risen. Oh. And even with dogs. Designer breeds. And you're like, this is just... And listen, if you have the money for it, Frenchies, whatever people want to spend, you have the cash, it's great. We are never mad at you buying stuff if you have the money. But I do think the the dog oh, industry yeah. has upped its bougie game, and we have followed. That's a good one, though. Oh. Yeah, don't go into debt for puppies. No, And if no. you get denied, that tells me that you're go extra to the broke. shelter. And, and dog ownership is very expensive. So yes. while I love dogs and— you can adopt cheaper and all that. It's still, there's a lot of expenses that go along with it. So Absolutely. do not do this when you're broke. Absolutely. Okay, what's next, George? What screams I'm bad with money? The kids are on the reduced lunch fee program, but the parents drive a 2020 F-250 with a lift kit. Oh. That's sad. So what this is getting at, correct me if I'm wrong. Is they're taking advantage of a program. The reduced lunch fee program is for those that, you know, don't have... Yeah. A high enough income to support yep. covering the lunch, and so they get a reduced lunch fee yes. because of that. But on the other side, they are getting really nice, expensive trucks, probably with giant payments, and For also sure. modifying it, putting more money into the truck. Yes, while well, they're kids. So yes, there's something so gross about that because yep. you want these programs to go to kids that really need it, and these sure. this family could be broke. But there's also this sense of they're making terrible financial decisions. Yes, and you I should know. prioritize your kids. I know. Um, can I sound like a terrible human for a second? I mean, that's a that's a normal Thursday for Rachel. But, <laughs> but I also think about this with people that ask. And I know, okay, so like with kids, their kids ask you to donate to like their mission trip or ask to oh, donate yeah. to whatever. Um, and there's a part of me that's like, yes, make the kid earn and learn how to, you know, work and ask for money. I don't know. Like there's a principled thing people feel like, oh, yeah. But here's my question. If you have the money, do you – make your kid do that or not because, and I asked all of oh. this because there was a family that was asking for money and then they bought a new BMW. Oh. And I thought, it's like they, just didn't, asked, just, they just didn't just want to pay for We just paid for your that. kid's mission trip, part of it, and they bought a new car. So I was so conflicted in my spirit of like, was it a principled thing that the parents, maybe the parents could afford the BMW. I don't know. I don't sure. ask those questions, obviously. Uh, so like, maybe they could afford the mission trip, but they want the kid to learn how to work and ask for the money. But then at the same, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make sense? Well, mission trips too. And it's the are same, like, a little bit. I mean, they're taking advantage of like a school lunch program, so it's a little yeah. different. But it's that feeling of like help my kid out, but yet I'm going to go do what I want. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
I mean, part of it, like, there's these school programs. Hey, we want to pay for the band instruments, and so we're going to do the fundraiser. And mm. even if the parents have the money. It's not like the Boy Scouts selling Christmas wreaths or something. Like, sure. yeah, not that. But the mission trip one feels a little dicey. because It's it's faith-related, and it, there's a yeah. different element to the mission trip. funny? I don't know. I sound like a terrible but human. Good... I tried to give out of the generous spirit that we teach. Yeah. But I did think, hmm. Like, they could have just covered this <laughs> mission trip. Huh. But I think it is good for a kid to learn how to do that in the proper way. And, you know, just to have the, the wherewithal to go up to someone and be like, hey, I'm going on yeah, this trip. Yeah, but would you say to do that? Yeah. But would you, do you, would you feel weird if your kids did that, if you could afford it? That's and make other question. people fund their trip? I don't think I would feel bad. But whatever was left, I would cover the difference. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to let little Johnny not make it because he didn't hit his goal. Uh, next. Uh I knew a guy whose parent died and left him a modest inheritance, so he spent all the money doing a bunch of aftermarket work on his car. Rims, sound system, flashing lights, paint, the whole thing. Well, long story short, he crashed the car and totaled it, but he hadn't updated the value of the car. Oh, no, after all the work was done with his insurance company, so the payout he got was like $10 and some lint. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Rachel, you know how I feel about... You just don't like cars in general. Well, I, cars are not the problem. Cars are amoral, Rachel. It's the people that drive them that I have a problem with. Do you have a problem with rims and sound systems and flashing lights and paint and the whole thing? Uh, I don't have a problem with any of those. I have the problem with the person who... Use the inheritance. Unwisely go goes full prodigal son with this money and no, goes, you know what would be really wise? Getting some aftermarket rims and flashing lights because... There's something missing inside my heart that can only be filled with a lift kit. That's what it really screams, Rachel. It's sad. You may have been in grief. Well, that's a good point. When you are in grief, if you do lose a loved one and there's some kind of windfall, you don't want to spend that money instantly. No, that's right. You always want to pause, give it don't six make, months, take time to grieve, don't make big decisions. Don't make big decisions. There's that, lesson one. For sure. Number two, update your uh, car information with the insurance company yeah. if you get any work done on it. Make sure we do that. And number three, I think there was other priorities involved here. Yep, for uh, sure. I'm modding a car like that on a depreciating asset, it's usually not going to ROI. If you put 10000 in, it doesn't mean you can go sell that car for $10,000 more. That's right, that's right. So that's so my feelings, Rachel, and that's as nice as I can say. I it. like it, George. All right, next, buying designer clothes for your young kids who are going to outgrow them in just a few months. Oh, well, do we need to define designer? Like, are we talking Gucci and Chanel? That's how I would say designer, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, What's like a nice baby brand that you get? You're like, this. I feel bougie buying this brand for my children. Um, I'm unaware. There's a store called Janie and Jack. Oh, yeah. That's probably the bougiest I've gotten. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not quite designer, but just kind no. of upscale boutique. Yes, but baby I don't clothing. do it anymore. My kids just wear gym shorts and t-shirts. So is this a phase, or do you? Yeah, it's when the kid, when the girls were little, specifically, and okay. I would go and buy matching stuff, and it was expensive. I mean, I look back, I'm like, it was a lot of money, and some of them still had tags on them. George, oh, it yeah. was passed to Amelia, passed to Caroline, and neither of them wore some of it. Wow! And I gave them to a neighbor. Dang. A well-dressed little girl <laughs> now. <laughs> Should have given it to me. Little me, I could have really used oh, it, Rachel. Oh, I know. I didn't even think about that. George. Well, what's, I, do you think this is bad with money? I do. Ha can I be honest? I yeah. do have judgment for like a little kid wearing like Gucci shoes. I don't understand it. I know. And I get that if you're like the Kardashians, it's like, all right, you can pull that off. You're like in the fashion world. But for world. the average person, you're dropping your kid off. I just want to always know the motivation behind it. Why do you feel the need to do it? I think here's a hot take. If you are still pooping your pants, you shouldn't wear designer clothes. <laughs> I just, you know what I mean? I know. I Whether you're a kid fair. or an adult. Yep. I, think I just that's feel fair. like it's a risky move. You're I gonna, think that's you're going to destroy the clothing. I think that's fair, you know? I cuz it's just it's just it all gets ruined anyways. I don't know. Yeah. I'm with you. I don't I don't think it's well, I baby clothing wise. especially as my little daughter's growing. It just feels like why did we buy all for this? For sure, for sure. Wear one time. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Next. Next. Here's one. What says I'm bad with money? Judging how much they can afford by proximity to payday. Ah, so if it's like hmm. three days till payday, they're like, yeah, I can afford that because I'm getting paid soon. But if payday just happened. Okay. You know? Yeah. So get, this one's a little blurry to me. It's a little in the gray. Talk me through it. Because, you know, we talk about paycheck planning in the Every Dollar Premium app. So, like, bills hit a certain day and you're like, okay, yeah, I know we'll have this much. And I'll get paid on the 15th. And we'll, I don't know. I could see some things happening where you're like, oh, yeah. 
I mean, I'll be honest too. Like, there's some things that Winston and I were gonna buy, and I was like, we gotta, we gotta wait till pay. Oh, that's us waiting for payday though. This yeah. is opposite. So I guess this is before payday. I don't know. There's still an, an element to this mindset that is very paycheck to paycheck. It's that feeling, yes, and of to just that, being that. I say nay. Okay. I don't like I'm that mentality. You. It feels. I was stressful. trying to go. I was trying to go on the happy side of this one, George. Well, Give I agree. A I'm grace. just saying if you. We recommend using a budget. We love yeah. every dollar. And when you do that, it takes the stress of like, I'm going to judge how much I can afford by proximity to payday. Instead, you can look at your budget, look at your bank account and go, all right, I'm at a budget on yeah. this category or, or I need to move some things around. Yep. Yeah. But I like just having that awareness by doing the budget. It's good. Uh, all right. Next, buying two or three iPads at the same time so you can use one and keep the others on charge so you're never without one. Oh, what? No. People Can do I tell this? you, iPads are so expensive. Like our kids it's didn't like have the tablets, so we went and looked to be like, okay, we're traveling with them, and we'll get them like maybe something to watch on the plane. We looked at iPads, and I was like, holy crap! So we just did the Amazon Fires that just have like That's Disney Plus and Amazon, all of it, and it and it was like less than a hundred bucks. iPads are expensive, which yeah. I guess people work on them. I think they're like yeah. right. Are we talking over a thousand bucks for like a? I know some of the pro models remember. and all that. Let's look at but it. it's it's upwards. It yes. can get up there depending gonna, on the model. I'm going to look because I really want to know. What's the price of iPads these days? Okay, so the lowest, it starts at $799. Wow. Or $66.58 a month. Perfect. If you want to do a little uh, payment plan, which we do recommend. My final take on this iPad situation is that it's very wasteful. Now, I'm hoping that if you have three iPads, you are very wealthy and you paid cash for all of these and it was not well, a big financial debt. especially that's a single debt. use person. Like like one person, it sounds like, is using these. Is it that difficult to charge an iPad? I, I don't, don't think know. they die that quickly. Lot. Get a mobile charger, man. It's a Get lot. Get over yourself. All okay. right. Next, being completely broke and talking about what tattoo they will get next. Oh, this is another hot take. Do you think tattoo people are broke people? No. I, Not see, the ones I know. See, that's funny is I'm like, because this person could just be dreaming about the future. Their goals for their artistry. Well, they're stating there's someone who's completely broke, and they're like, oh, this is the tattoo I'm getting next. You know, yeah, which, and tattoos are really expensive. Very expensive. Hey, I know, but I'm just, I'm really trying to stick up for some of these people. He could just this is good be, cop, or cop. she could be. Why did I stereotype to a dude? I don't know. Ladies? You can get tats. They, yes, we can. <laughs> I have Jesus. Fish. Some people sitting here have tat. Not um, I. Single tats. Um, but no, I, uh, I don't know. Yeah. For, so, you think, so for some reason. Talking about versus doing is different. You can talk about it. At. Like okay. we can be broke and be like, oh my gosh, what would the next trip we would go on be? That's and just fair. dream. Okay. And what if it said being completely broke and going to get a tattoo? Let's change it. Not different. There we go. If we are in the action of it, not smart. No, I do feel like tattoos have this weird like addictiveness. Like there's always like a next one and a next one. There's not. Not for you. I'm proof. <laughs> but you're not a tattoo person. I think we can Who all agree says, on that. George. We can all agree you're not going to show up with a half sleeve anytime Judgy, soon. Judgy, come on. Don't speak down. Is Winston a tattoo person? Nope. Why ruin a great thing? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> you know? There we go. Oh my gosh! Okay. I have to make one Winston reference because people in the comments are I like, <laughs> "I take it. I take a drink every time George mentions Winston." George so. loves Winston, and Winston loves George. There we it's go. It's a beautiful friendship. Next, uh, I had a friend who used to play Xbox online, and he would frequently not be on for weeks at a time because he would sell his Xbox to pay bills. As soon as he had money again, he'd pay four hundred dollars for a new console. Then he'd run out of money and pawn it for fifty to a hundred dollars. He did this probably five or six times a year. Oh gosh! Oh man! So just based on Patterns. basic math, that's called a pattern. So we, if now if he's selling his Xbox to get out of debt and he's doing some stuff with the money that is good and getting him ahead, that's yeah. one thing. But it sounds like but he's just in to a keep loop. up paycheck to paycheck. Well, he's spending two grand a year on this. Terrible cycle of just yeah. overpaying for the Xbox. 400 pawning it. to 50. 400 to 50. And if you're pawning it, like you're desperate. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, he's yeah, not, you're looking he's not for waiting cash for the quick. Facebook marketplace. No. Yeah, you're looking for cash buyer. quick. For sure. For so sure. So that's sad. Yep. Uh, is that a gaming thing? I don't know. But the fact know. that he's willing to give up the game for, to pay the bills, that tells me at least he's got some priorities. There <laughs> yeah, we go. There's your, look at you being all positive. I'm trying to play good cop like Rachel. That's it feels good. good. Doesn't to it? try to be a good person. You just always think there's a human behind this comment. I get why you attempt hurt it. Hurt people, hurt people. That's, what are they? What are that's Reddit. <laughs> All right, here's a new that's one. That's Reddit. 
<laughs> what screams you're bad with money? You shop at a rent a center for living room furniture, new TV, etc. Hmm. So have you heard of these rent a center yes. locations? Yeah. Yep. So like the item, the furniture, appliance, let's say is it's, it's a six hundred dollar mm-hmm. appliance or TV, and you end up paying through payments a thousand dollars. Yep. And so the interest, which there is no real interest because it's not truly a lender, mm-hmm. which is how they are sneaky, charging Lock. you that much. Yes. You end up paying close to double what the actual what item it would is. be. But it's 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 the urgency of needing it and not having the money to go to rent it full. for a week, week yes, by week. That's right. So obviously the smart thing is for stuff that you need, even if it takes a few months. Save and save and save. Find ways around it because stuff like this, it's like a hole. Like you just get oh, stuck yeah. in it. And you get in that cycle, and it's hard to get out. Okay, up next, they have trouble getting a job with a master's of philosophy, so they decided to take out more student loan debt and get a PhD in philosophy. Oh man, this was our this was this a trend. This was a trend. I feel like when I graduated college, so people were like, "I don't know what I want to do. I'm going to go get my master's," and then they would like finish their master's and like, "I'm going to get a second. I master's. don't know what I want to do. I want to get yeah." And they just and they do. They end up staying in school and in school. And debt and debt and debt. I feel like and I still have friends. I mean, I'm, you know, 34 now. Yeah. I still have friends who I feel like are still perpetually just getting, getting more and more degrees and really? now struggle. And I feel like the more degrees you get, it's almost harder to find a job because yes. you don't have the experience to land the job. Right. And there's some, obviously, uh, tracks career wise oh, that yeah. you need a master's, right? And like, and it's part of your plan going forward. But this just like into the world of degrees. Yep. Of like, and I, it's to avo- and I think to avoid doing something, something else, right? That's what it feels like. Yeah. So a lot of my family is in you know the health and and medical yep. world, and so you've got to go get you know the masters if you want to be a nurse practitioner or continue on in medical school. Yeah. But for a lot of these degrees, it's just like you don't know what you want to do with your career, so you just chase education. And when you do it with debt, it just adds insult to injury. Yes. So for th- sure. we get a lot of calls on the Ramsey Show, Rachel, where people are like, "I'm gonna go." Into debt for my master's. I'm like, why? They're like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. There's not really a good reason. So right. always pause and go, what job am I after? Mm-hmm. And make sure the education matches that goal. Yes. And if the job actually needs it. Because you True. may not even need it. Yeah. And you'll be fine. Hot take. It's good. All right. Next up, trading in your car every time it's paid off. Ooh. Oh, man. Yep. <laughs> So it's like, I want to get more debt. Okay, now I'll pay it off. Then I'll get more debt. And you just pay think about off. all those payments. All those payments. And when you're used to the payment, you're like, well, I've been used to paying 500 bucks a month for my car. I'll get a nicer, newer car. Mm-hmm. This one's gross and used now because I used it. Can I tell you, we have some we have some friends and they, um, for the first time ever, they had the money, which, is, which this is some people's cases. They have the money to pay for something, but they just put on payments so that they don't take that They'd chunk rather of money. Not, they see it in savings like, well, I don't want to yep, spend 40 yep. grand. That's right. But that's I'll right. spend 40 grand on a loan. And they had to get a new car. Uh, it was used. And this was probably like last year. But they, for the first time ever, bought a car with complete cash. And they're kind of joking with me. They're like, we're going to just try this. And they both admitted like it is the, they said never again will we go back in car payments. Like, wow. What was the was, reasoning? What was the, the change of It was the best heart? feeling that it's ours. It was a total emotional thing. No payments. They were like, it, yes, it's all ours. And they're like, and we can just drive and drive it because I think they were in a little bit of this pattern of like, because once you're done with paying it off, you're like, okay, is it kind of time for a new, you're just in, it's in a yeah. weird cycle, right? Mentally, that you get it's just a little box check of like, yes, we need to get a new one yep, now. Yep. And they're like, oh yeah, we'll just have this forever, ever, and amen, you know? So anyways, it's true. Break the cycle of payments. Break it. Yep. And what that usually means for people is you got a really downgrading car for a little while. Absolutely. And then you're going to upgrade yes. in cash slowly. Yep. You're going to go from the $8,000 car to the 12000 to yes. the fifteen, to the twenty, to the twenty five. And the great thing is cars at that level, they don't depreciate a They've ton. already lost most of their right. value. So, so you're getting a great deal. You're doing great. <laughs> doing great. Ha ha. That's ha ha. Okay, next. Amazon boxes at the door of a rundown house every single day. Ooh, Day. <laughs> this is some shade from the neighbor. They're peeking out going, you see that? They got more and more okay, packages. Okay, so here's, here's, the, here's the positive Annie in me. Positive what if Annie? they're getting diapers? Positive Polly in me. What if they're getting toilet paper and soap and essentials? What if they're getting essentials and they're just doing it on Amazon? I guess they shouldn't have Amazon Prime. Which they probably do. If it's yeah. showing up every day. It's true. I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. Or it one. could just be crap. That well, and <laughs> we there's all also buy this, that we don't need. There's a lot of assumptions being made about this rundown house, right? You know, we don't know anything about these people. Yeah, that's maybe right. they just don't care about aesthetic. <laughs> maybe they don't like the landscape. 
We yeah. don't know. They don't want to put the money in to renovate the thing. We don't know. But yeah, the idea of getting Amazon packages every day, that's a very Rachel Cruz thing to do. So only do it if it's in the budget. <laughs> Last but not least, burning friends by asking for emergency money that they know they can't repay. I got a hot take on this one, Rachel. Okay, go. I don't think this is on the uh, the friend. I think it's on the person mm. giving them the money. Wow. George. So like me asking you for money it's and my you giving it to me. It's more my problem. You're than enabling I'm... my behavior. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, Take does, that, it say Reddit. does it say you're bad with money? Sure. Like, yes, it's not good to burn friends by constantly badgering them for money. Yes. Uh, that's no friendship at all. No. Now, if it's a one, you know, kind of one off thing, mm -hmm. it happens. But if this is a consistent thing, they're using you at yeah, that point. Absolutely. Ditch them. Before we go into things that you might say if you're bad at money, we want to tell you about a game that we've been loving, George. This What's is that? Telestrations. One of the best. One of the best games. So easy to learn. Very fun. Kind of competitive. Very competitive. Which but I also like. kind of not. So don't feel bad if you're not the no. competitive type. But when it gets rounds after you've passed your your board that you have to draw, and if you're not a great drawer, it's okay. It makes the but game even better. But if it gets back to you and it matches your card still, it's the best feeling where you think, oh, man. But also, if it doesn't match up, which is fine, it means everyone else was a bad drawer, too. So it's yep. just fun. It really is. It's a and fun game. there's always game. laughs. It's kind of like karaoke where, like, the worse you are at singing, the funnier it is. Yes, yes. So if you're not and an all, artist, That's good. right. Yeah, you're good. You're good to go that's to play this one. game. Yep. So make sure to check it out at Walmart today. Promise you will not and regret I, can it. Can I say I love seeing people post about the games they're buying yes, from our friends. from You know, they're buying Tapple, Tapple Telestrations. They're playing with so their family. Fun. And I feel like we are a part of this moment where they're connecting we love in it. an analog way. We love it so much. So, so great. All right, George. So sometimes actions speak louder than words. Always. And sometimes words speak pretty loudly. So there's some phrases people will say that could indicate, huh. So this is like, if you've said this, it might be a little gut check. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's just go through three. We of pulled them. a lot of these from Reddit threads too. They're just so honest on Reddit, so we thought, why not? All right, the first one. I can afford the payment. Mm. This is a big one. Usually said with with great pride. Yeah, like and probably really the most common something. one. I think. Yeah, I think that this is a very common phrase people say, because the belief that debt has to be a part of your life, that you there's no way you can save up for something like a car, or. Um, a college degree for your kids, like whatever the thing may be, the, right? The higher the price tag, for sure, the feeling of like, oh my gosh, I don't know if this is possible. And so you go straight to payment thinking, which means interest is usually involved and you get in that cycle of debt. So yeah. it's a, and I understand where people are. At. It's hard, right? Like, well, and we're, we're like, we grow up with no financial literacy. And so you just learn that if you can afford the payment, yep. you're doing great. Mm -hmm. But that also means you could be reaching zero financial goals. So we always say, you know, broke people have this mentality of how much down, how much a month? Those are the questions they're asking. Wealthy people and smart spenders go, how much? What's the total cost? Can I actually afford it in full yes. instead of just looking at payments? And the dealerships and all the people lending you money, they want you to think in terms of payments because then they can really screw you because yeah. you're not thinking about the full price you're paying, the interest. So that's And you a might good be thinking, one. well, of course wealthy people think that because they have the money to actually buy it. But listen, it's the mindset. That's how they got there. Like, it's this idea of I'm not going to send my paycheck to the bank and pay extra in interest. I'm actually going to let my money work for me. So it's a harder road. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, it takes it's time to save up and set up the sinking it. fund to right. save a little bit each month. But it's so worth it. And yep. it's more rewarding, I feel like. For sure. When you really earned it by saving up Absolutely. over time. Absolutely. Here's the next one. I won't retire. I'm going to work until I die. Oh, man. Hey. That's a, that's first of all, just sad. Yeah. Retirement, it is, it can be a scary reality for a lot of people, right? When they start to get towards that age and they're thinking, oh my gosh, have I lost time or I have lost time? How do I make up for this? Is this even possible? And that fear can take over. And then some people just give up Yeah. and they just say, okay, fine. I'm just going to work till I die, uh, which is that Losing hope, right? Yeah. And we always want people to have the hope that you still have a level of destiny. Now, you may have to work longer in order to reach the goal you need to, to be able to live off that retirement. But that doesn't mean that you just give up. And that's kind of what this this is yeah. a giving up sentence. Well, and we take a lot of calls on the Ramsey Show where people can't work anymore for whatever reason. They become yes. disabled or their health takes a decline mm -hmm. or a family member's health declines and they have to take care of them or an aging spouse. 
And so you have to plan for these things. You might need a slower pace of life. And so you got to be diligent. You got to consistently invest now so that 30 years from now, you got a big pile of money to where you don't have to work. Yep. Now, the, this quote could be like a Dave Ramsey where it's like, I won't retire, I'm going to work until I die. Like, he just loves to work. So we can caveat it if I'm going to be a good cop and say, maybe this is a very positive sentiment. <laughs> you know, it's good to work. Work is uh, is good for us. It keeps us going. It gives sure. us purpose. Yeah, but it's not out of a necessity to But this idea that you can't financially, retire, yeah. that's sad. That's right. All right, the last one. I can afford it if I just eat a little less this month. Oh, gosh. I know. Now, eating out less, I like that one. But, like, you're sure. gonna, don't starve yourself yeah. to afford something. Yeah, we're not going to limit the food intake that we need for our bodies. Yeah, this is where we talk about the important things, you guys. The things that you actually need. So food is being one of them. Shelter, utilities, and transportation. Make sure all of those are covered before anything else, before any night out, any sweater that you're going to buy, like whatever else is out there, making sure that these are covered. So don't don't sacrifice food intake. <laughs> well, and don't go like eat ramen for a month so that you can afford some frivolous purchase. Yes, you know? that's right too. Yeah, Put yep. good things in your body. That's right. Okay? Yep. So listen, at the end of the day, you guys, not having financial goals and not caring if debt is never paid or retirement is never funded, this Ooh. whole like YOLO life. Yeah. It's it's not worth it. And if that is for some reason your mentality, you can change it. And that's the beautiful thing. That doesn't have to be you. That's really nice, Rachel. Thank you. Good reminder that we have the power to change and uh, you don't always have to lift the truck. Yeah, you we know? do. There you go. And <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> um, I said, yep, you're right. Rachel finally I, I, agreed I, with I, me. I, I'm here. Uh, we didn't, now we, can I caveat again at the end here? We don't say any of this to shame people, but we do want to create some self-awareness. And maybe we we kind of held up a mirror here that yeah. it didn't feel good to just look into and say, yep, that's me. But I want to encourage you. I used to be like that. I used to think a lot of those things. And over time, it changed. I went through Financial Peace University, started budgeting, got out of debt. And that gave me hope that, oh, my gosh, there's this whole other world on the other side. That's right. Where I don't have to rely on debt and this bad cycle of paycheck to paycheck. I love it. We can all change, George. It's hard, but it's good. And sometimes necessary. Amen. All right. So it's almost the end of the episode. And we like to close out every episode with guilty Guilty as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip of the drink. Lindsay. Are you ready? Yeah. Have you ever come up with something on the spot that you were supposed to have done in advance and it did or didn't work out? Oh. What was the outcome? So like, wait, so... Have you ever done something where – come up with something on the spot that you should have prepped for ahead oh. of time? And, like, it didn't work out or it did work out? Like, uh. what example do you have of that? Because you guys both are speakers. You do other things. Have you ever knew you needed to prep for something but then on the spot was like, I got this. It's fine. And then it worked out last minute. Like, mm. you changing something or it didn't work out. Oh, man. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm going back to my Rolodex of memories. Yes. There was one live event. I'm trying to think which one it was. It was one of the smart conferences. And I feel like it was a talk I had given a couple of times. And I remember just thinking, eh, it's fine. It had been like a year, though. And I want to say I didn't really, like, look over everything. And I got I got out on stage. And I remember being – like, it's just that feeling of, like, I'm not completely, like – panicking Mm -hmm. because I'm like I know I've done this enough like I can get through it but I do remember halfway through getting like getting halfway through it and thinking like oh my gosh Rachel like I don't know what's next I can't remember my next point and that's the worst feeling for me Mm. that you're having to like wait on your notes and all of that and it just wasn't the best I don't think it was like a traumatic terrible experience and I think yeah but I do remember that feeling and that was a reminder that I'm like regardless of how long you do something you prep for it still prep for it so Beautiful reminder. Yeah. I'm so prepared that I'm trying to think back to George the last is a time. very prepared. Person have you ever at work. done something last minute and it worked out better than you would have thought? I try not to or do no. anything last minute. <laughs> okay. Nothing. So this was geared towards you, Rachel. Sorry. Rachel's it would be very spontaneous. I'm very much more. Yeah. Now for school, I remember multiple times, middle school and high oh. school, getting and they're like, "All right, uh, everyone, put your textbooks away and get out your number two pencil." For a test, and we're thinking, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh no, 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 no! And then you, you just try real hard. And then you have like eight left times up, and you just think, 
Lord Jesus, mm. guide my pencil see, as I feel see. in my yeah. future. <laughs> that remind I do have one. It in and just like, well, if it makes you happy, uh, I do have one. I hope that works. It does make me. We happy. had a, like a summer reading program in high school, and I did not read this book. And I thought I'll just do the Spark Notes of Siddhartha. And I went in and take the quiz. None of the questions were connected to the Spark Notes. Zero. And I failed it miserably, and I got in in trouble for essential. Oh. I don't know if it was cheating. Because I got none of them right. So I, I <laughs> I'm the worst cheater ever. Yes. But uh, it wasn't fun, and that didn't feel good. So but I still again. refused. So to, again, I refused never. to read Siddhartha. I still only know the Spark Notes. Good for I don't you. think I read a lot of books in high school, which is why I love to read today. Which is funny. Oh, I you're would, making up for lost time. I think I am. But you're also reading all, not, mostly fiction. I was not a good student. A lot of Colleen Hoover. <laughs> I love her Colleen. <laughs> Just get my Uggs on and my barefoot dream throbe and just She's read some Colleen Hoover. So great. <laughs> She's so great. You're personally fine. attacking some people listening. It's right fine. <laughs> it's just, again, it's fine. There's other authors out there. I just want to let people know. Oh, my gosh. She's doing fine. She's a very best-selling author. Yeah, she's doing a lot better than us, probably. <laughs> Let's be that honest. That goes without saying. Oh, so good. It's fine. Okay, so that good. All right, fun. George. Uh, so uh, who's – you You might be uh, – um. You always do this. Man, it's not a race. I'm not very competitive, but this is one thing I can beat you at. Mm. There you it's go. Good. All it's right. good. Um, it's good. It's fun. getting a little sweet at the end. Maybe all the, like, the syrup and sugar felt I don't know. Yeah, what's bottom. in it? What's in it? So this is Neptune's Gardens. Let me remind you, Rachel. Two plurals. And I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Yeah. How about you? Mm, eight and a half. Wow. You just had to one-up me. <laughs> Now you come up because with the Because I'm and a half. very much contemplating what I ordered this at a restaurant, and I think I might. Okay. It's that feeling of like, I, don't, I think so. But it was delicious. Like, I would it drink it. It was really good. And it was very fun, a fun, bright drink. And yes. here's what's in it uh, tequila, lime juice, elderflower liqueur, mm. blue carousel, and egg white. Oh, wow. Very we nice. We love the egg white, Rachel. Very nice. It's not weird, people. It's a very normal thing to add to cocktails. It would be it, very. I would not do this at my house, though. That's what's hard about these. That's a very like. Mixologist drink. Michael goes all out for he does us. Go all but out, some which people we out there, they don't mind taking you know That's putting right. an effort. Rachel, all love it. you we should all take love note. It. Sometimes right. effort is a good thing. Uh, so if you want to check it out, you can get the recipe in the show notes. And by the way, it only costs two dollars and seventy seven cents to make this, and it's got a lot of ingredients in it. So fantastic! So give it a try. I could have used a little more punch, a little more sour, a little more sweet. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Just a little more of everything. A little something. All right. It's almost closing time, and we always love hearing from you guys. So if you think we missed something that maybe screams, I'm bad with money, leave it in the comment. We want to read it. Curious. So curious. So curious, Rachel. Thank you for that. And if you don't want to miss a future episode, be sure to subscribe and uh, follow us on social as well at Rachel Cruz, at George Camel with a K. We love hearing from Smart Money Happy Hour listeners. And hit the follow button wherever you're listening as well. Yes. That we'd helps. Love to hear from you. Absolutely. Well, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an all-new episode next Thursday of Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour.